Today, we will be making a game called Apple Pie using Swift and Xcode. It is a word guessing game where a player has limited amount of tries. Each unsuccessful attempt will cause an apple to fall off, and the player wins the game if they can guess the word before all the apples fall off. Let's get started. Firstly, let's open Xcode. My Xcode version is 13 and I'm using Swift 5. Now, let's create a new Xcode project. Make sure it's an iOS and let's create a new app. Let's name our project Apple Pie. And make sure it's in Storyboard. Our project we're going to make is only suitable for an iPad due to it, it requiring a bigger touchscreen. So let's uncheck iPhone. Head over to the main storyboard and now let's change our device to an iPad. Let's also change our device here to an iPad. Now let's change our orientation to landscape. Now to construct what we saw earlier, let's add a vertical stack view. Drag it over here. Now let's add constraints. Head over to constraints. And since we wanted to cover the whole screen, let's make it zero for each. So that'll make our vertical stack view cover the entire screen. Add for constraints. Now we're ready to add views and controls. Head over to the object library and then grab an image view. Since it's the only image, it'll take up the entire screen. Now let's change it the content mode to aspect fit. After you made sure it's an aspect fit, now we can add our images. We'll be adding these three, or these seven trees, to our Assets folder. Now our seven trees will be shown in our Assets folder, and we can use these to access over here. So we can choose what image we want. One more thing, make sure your images are set to Single Scale. Head over to Scales and choose Single Scale. Now we have to add the keyboard. Even though we're updating the images, let's choose one so it's easier to visualize. And now we have to add the keyboard. And to do that, we can imagine it having a, being a vertical stack in the vertical stack. So each the keyboard will have around three um, items in the vertical stack, and then there'll also be horizontal stacks inside each vertical stack. Head over to the object library and grab another vertical stack. Now click on your stack view, and then we'll change the alignment to center and distribution to fill equally. We'll also add spacing of 5. That illustrates the 5 pixels of spacing needed between each horizontal stack view. So let's go head over and grab a horizontal stack view and drag it in our vertical stack view. Set the spacing to 5 and make sure the alignment and distribution are fill, out your fill. Now let's head over and grab a button for our stack views. Each of the three rows will have a unique number of buttons in our keyboard. Let's drop our button in a, inside our horizontal, inside our horizontal stack view, and we want our buttons to be square. So let's we have to change the aspect ratio. Let's change the aspect ratio ratio by clicking here and then going over the constraints. Make sure that they're all zero, and then check the aspect ratio. Click Add Constraint. Now let's set the multiplier to one. Now click on the button and make sure you change the font to system and also make sure it's 30, make sure the size is 30 so it's easier to read. Now let's copy our button and then by using command C then doing command V so we have at least 10 buttons on our first row. Now make sure you change the letters to what they appear on normal keyboard. So capital W. E, R, T, and then Y, and then U, I. And we can add one more button. Drag it over here, and then we'll put make that. O, and then. 
So this resembles our standard QWERTY keyboard. Now let's create our rest of the keyboard by copying our horizontal stack view. So now we have three rows. Now we can edit it to match the our normal keyboard. So let's remove a few. So it we need 10 in this one, 9, and then 7 in the third row. So in the second row, we can remove 1. And then the third one, we can remove 2. Remove 3. Okay. Now we can easily change it by double clicking. So A, S, D, F, G, H, I, I mean J, K, L, and for this one, or for the third row, Z, X, C, V, N and M. Now we have completed the keyboard. Now, within the second stack view, so this one, let's add two more labels. So one label inside it. And let's make sure it's below all of our uh, other stack views. Now we can drag it over to right below our third one. So not inside, but right below it. Now let's copy it using Command C and then paste it using Command V. Now let's click on the first button, make sure it's centered. Same thing with the second button. And let's change the font of this to 30. Now we'll center our second button and change the font to 20. And now our layout is complete. So let's run our app to make sure everything's working. Make sure you have no errors or warning messages. One more thing. We need to set the correct priority or else our labels in the bottom might not show. Let's go over here and click on the error message. Let's click change priority. Now everything will use auto layout to resize. And I also changed my iPad to the iPad Pro 11 inch third generation. Let's run out app and let's see how it looks. Let me rotate this. Great, everything looks as it should. And since we're using auto layout, it automatically adjusts the layout. Let's continue. Now let's start programming our layout. Let's open the assistant by going over here and clicking assistant. And now let's make some room so we can see our iPad. So that you should see a view controller function here. First, let's start by creating an outlet for our tree image. Click control on your keyboard and drag it over to the code. And let Now let's create a collection for all our buttons. Hold the Q button with control and drag it over here. Now, instead of our outlet, let's do outlet collection. The reason we're doing this is because it'll be tedious to create an individual outlet for all of these buttons. Let's name this letter buttons. Now, let's, now let's connect the rest of the buttons to the button outlet collection. Hold this circle here and then drag it to each of our buttons. So W and then E to the R to T, to the Y, U, and so on. Now let's create an action for the button. Also again, it will be tedious to create an action for each of the buttons. So let's group them. Click Control and drag the Q over here. Now make sure it's a Let's drag our outlet, our button here. Make sure it's an action. Let's name this letter button pressed. Let's also change the type of the argument to, we'll keep it as sender. Now let's click connect. When the user presses a, when the user presses a button, it should be not, it should be disabled. To do that, let's do sender is enabled equals false. Now we'll need to change any to UI button. 
So changing a UI button allows it to individually change the titles of each of our buttons. Now let's control drag each of our buttons to our function. So we'll control drag the W to our function and it shall turn blue. Now let's do control drag E and you'll know it's connected if it turns blue. Now let's connect our last button. And we're done. We connected all the buttons to this action. Now let's verify that tapping each button disables it. Let's build and run our app. So let's see. So we have to make sure that tapping each button disables the button. And that shows us that we have connected all of our buttons. Great. Let's head back over to Xcode. Now we're ready to start building the logic. At the top of view controller, let's create a variable called our, our list of words. In this variable, we can now store our first set of words that the players have to guess. This will be a list or an array. Now below our list of words, let's create a constant called incorrect moves allowed. And this sets the number of attempts the user has to guess the correct word. Let's set it to seven. Now, we also need to set number of total wins, and number of total lo losses. We will use this to print the total wins and losses for the user. Let's set them equal to zero. Now, let's create a new round. Right below the function view did load, let's create a new one called new round. Now, let's create a new fit. Now let's create a new Swift file to keep our game struct. That will when we'll use that to in our new round function. So click Command N and click Swift file. And we're gonna name this game. Now inside of game, let's create a struct called game. This will define what a game is. It will have two properties: the word and incorrect moves remaining. Now let's head over back to our view controller. Now, let's add the current game variable, and we'll set it to an instance of game. And we'll also have a new, add a new round function, a new variable, new constant called new world, and we'll remove the first word from our list so it changes each time. And we'll also create a new game instance called correct current game. You may wonder why there's an exclamation mark after the game. It's because for a brief instant when your app launches, the current game won't have a value. And for now, we'll, for now we'll say that, that we'll, we're letting it know that it's okay for it not to have a value, but we'll cover null values in future sessions. Now, we need to create this new update UI function. In our update UI function, we will essentially be changing the UI two main ways. First, changing the text of the score label so that it showcases number of total wins and total losses. We're we'll also be updating the image so that we take in we or we change the image that is being shown with the number of apples. Now let's call our update UI function. Now let's run our app. It should showcase the beginning of a new round. Great. Now inside our letter press button function. We're going to set a new constant called letter string and we'll set set it equal to configuration.title. The reason for the exclamation mark is so that it knows that in some buttons may not have a title. And then we'll also set letter to the character of the letter string. So we'll lowercase it so it's easier to compare with our list of words here, which are all are in lowercase. Now in our game struct, let's head over and add a few more things. Firstly, we need to add a guest letters array. This keeps track of the letters to guest. We also need to add a mutating function to be able to see if the letter to guest is contained in the letter that they were that they need to guess. And if it doesn't, then we subtract incorrect moves remaining by one. Now let's head over to our view controller and change our um, just change where we call our current game because now it also needs the additional input the parameter. Now we'll set guest letters equal to an empty array. And here 
underneath our update UI or, or underneath actually over here. So now we need to add how we are calling the player guest function in current game. And we also need to update the UI every single time the button is pressed. Now let's run our app and see if it displays it correctly. So if we press something, it seems that we can find a nil while implicitly unwrapping an optional value. The reason we ran into this error is because we forgot to initialize new round here. Let's run our function. Great, it can be seen that the number of apples are disappearing each time we press it. Now we need to create a computed now we need to create a um, computed property so that we can see what letters they entered and what letters um, is wrong. But to be able to do that, we can use a formatted word struct and we have a formatted word variable and inside our game function, we are creating a formatted word variable. Let's put this outside our mutating function inside our game struct. Now let's go over to update UI function and add that. So let's see if we run it. The correct word label dot text changes to the current game dot formatted word so we get our formatted word. So if we press letter we get our formatted letters here. Like that. Great so far. But we see another error. Two underscores together it looks like it's uh, fully underlined. So we don't know how many characters there are. We can add spaces, but it's just purely improving the aesthetic. But we're not actually changing the code. So to do that, we'll use a um, we'll make our letters into an array, and then use a join separator, which divides, which separates everything with a space. So now this changes our corrected word dot labels text. And we have also created a um, new variable called with word with spacing. Now let's build an application to see a clear space between what we type and let's go. So we have seen the different characters and we also know how many there are. But we see two issues clearly. One, there's no winning and second, there's no losing. So we don't know if um, the number of incorrect moves remaining falls below zero. So to do that, let's create a new function that handles this and checks the state of the game. And to do that, we create a new function called update a game state, and it checks if the num number of incorrect moves remaining is zero, then it increases loss. Else, if the current word is equal to the game word, then you add to the wins. Else, you just update the UI and it continues. So now we have to implement update a game state into our let and button press so it changes the game state every single time the button is pressed so we can essentially remove update ui and put update game state because in our update game state we also update the ui now it's really close but every time a new um, we add to our losses or wins a new round isn't starting to do that we can add a did set property to our total wins and total losses variables here we can see every time the total wins is updated, we call new round. So we're getting error that new round isn't in the scope. What we can do is move all of this over here into our UI controller. And now we can remove this from here. Now let's run our program and see. So let's finish this game. So I ran out of all my guesses, and there's one loss. Now if we continue, I can keep blue, and it adds to your loss. But we run into an issue. When all of our letters are disabled, we don't have anything to re-enable that. Also, if we run out of letters in the list, the game crashes. So we have to check if the number of errors in the list is empty or not before we proceed. Let's fix these last few bugs. So inside our new run function, now let's add an if check that checks if number of words is empty or not. And if it's not, 
then it just enables the letters. And if it is, then it restarts a new game. So we have to implement enables letter function. Let's do that now. And now we have an, create a function called enable letter buttons. This essentially just takes in the true or false. So this takes in whether we should enable them or not. So if we should enable them, then it just sets them to true. So every time for every button in our buttons, it makes them is enabled is true. Else if they shouldn't be enabled, it makes them all set to false. Now let's run our program and see. And if we test our app, it works like it should. And we have one win. Now it also enables all our buttons again so we can continue to play. This is great. And there, there might be a few other advanced features we could add to this app, but for now, that's the scope of this exercise. Thank you for completing this app with me and looking forward to see you again in future Swift videos.